I, Philip Joseph Pierre, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to St. Lucia, and I will uphold and defend the Constitution and the laws of St. Lucia. Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre assumed the reins of government at one of the most tumultuous times in St. Lucia's history. The impact of the COVID-19 pandemic brought on unprecedented social and economic fallout. Conflict overseas starved international shipping routes and skyrocketed oil prices. St. Lucia's open economy endured exponential price increases as a direct consequence. Honorable Pierre's putting people first mantra has been the guiding light which has steered St. Lucia away from the turbulence and kept the economy buoyed and on course to record the highest GDP growth in the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union in 2022. COVID-19 protocols handicapped local businesses, depriving consumers and depressing earnings. The pandemic also forced many St. Lucians on the breadline. Urgent intervention was needed to support vulnerable households and keep small businesses afloat. Honorable Pierre approved a debt forgiveness policy for NHC tenants occupying residential and commercial spaces in the CDC buildings. Approximately $4.2 million in outstanding rent was forgiven. Approximately $1 million was disbursed to local bar owners whose operations were affected due to COVID-19 protocols. Another $1.1 million was paid out to bus drivers who operated at reduced capacity during the pandemic months. We have taken to cushion the impact of rising fuel and food prices affecting our people and to assist those venturing into the new business or expansion of their businesses. Subsidizing cooking gas. Two, increasing personal tax allowance from eighteen to $25,000. Anybody getting less than $2,083 will pay no tax cushioning consumers from the full impact of rising fuel prices. Four, reducing personal income tax. Five, prioritizing the payment of tax refunds to taxpayers. Six, waiving interest and penalty charges on personal and company income tax. Seven, providing grants and soft loans funding for the youth economy. Eight, providing grants and soft loan funding for micro, soft, and medium-sized businesses. Nine, providing grants and soft loan funding for community-based tourism businesses. 10. Funding for creative industries, carnival, and emancipation day celebrations. <coughs> 11. Wave of import duty of $10,000 on vehicles for traveling officers in the public service. 12. Increasing the amount and range of support of, of support services for vulnerable groups and reinstating the distress fund. 13. 13. Providing a $500 one-off payment for pensioners. 14. Increase salaries to public servants. 15. Subsidizing the price of rice and sugar to the consumers. Latest increases in the prices of these commodities, rice, flour, brown sugar, and white sugar, have kept these prices unchanged, and it is, has cost the government $9.8 million. More parents needed help with back-to-school expenses. The Prime Minister allocated an additional $1.8 million for the Educational Assistance Program, which directly benefited more than 2,400 households. And with no access to institutional lending at the time, the Pierre administration was still able to pay CXC math and English fees and facilities fees for more than 25,000 secondary school students. 
the economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic also plunged more families into poverty. In response, the peer administration has expanded the public assistance program, providing support to an additional 1,000 families. Provisions have also been made for the island's sick and shut-in. Up to $7 million has been allocated to the home care program to ensure our most vulnerable population get the care they deserve. The COVID-19 pandemic financially destabilized low-income households and made it more difficult for breadwinners to maintain their domestic utility bills. Committed to poverty alleviation policies, Prime Minister Pierre has successfully leveraged the government's relationship with telecommunications provider and key corporate partner Flow to provide 5,000 vulnerable households with reliable and low-cost ICT services through its Home Communications Relief Bundle. So this 5,000 households and this program this morning is just part of the government's commitment to putting people first and the government's commitment to helping people of lesser means. The government is not made up of men of, um, and women who were in the higher income groups. And we thank the public of St. Lucia for the opportunity given to represent them. And our job and my commitment as Prime Minister is to improve the quality of life of the people of St. Lucia. And that gesture, with the, with the support of Flo, who have been with us in St. Lucia for quite a while, Flo has come in different names. Cayman Wireless, what else? Cayman Wireless, Lime, and now it's Flo. But they have been consistent in the supply of service to St. Lucia, and I'm happy with what they are doing now. And again, on behalf of the government of St. Lucia, I want to thank them and say to the senior minister, he did tell me that he would have pushed a little bit and he, and he succeeded. Honorable Pierre and his cabinet are mindful of the impact of inflation, which has caused steep increases in the cost of consumer goods. Fixed income households and pensioners in particular are adversely affected by the price hikes, which are directly linked to external factors, which include the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict, inflation, and volatility in the international oil market, all beyond the scope of the government's control. Despite the challenges, Honorable Pierre has allocated approximately $1.5 million dollars to provide immediate financial relief to government pensioners. Additionally, public servants continue to benefit from a 1% wage and salary increase, which took effect in April 2022. One of the, of the promises that we made is that we would have given pensioners a one-off payment of $500 at the end of July, Mr. Speaker. And as I speak, that money is in the bank account. And also, Mr. Speaker, after discussions with the NIC, the NIC has agreed to give all pensioners a 4.5% increase starting from July this year. The peer administration also coordinated and successfully implemented a series of strategic financial relief measures to help ease the economic squeeze caused by the pandemic and record high inflation. The government has honored a 1% salary increase to public servants. A one-time $500 payment has been paid out to every government pensioner. NIC pensioners now benefit from a 4.2% monthly increase, equivalent to an additional $4 million annual payout. <laughs> Chair recognizes the Honorable Philip J. Pierre, Prime Minister of St. Lucia. The Prime Minister spent part of the first 12 months in office 
advocating for St. Lucia and the Caribbean. I believe our presence here is testimony to our recognition that we are at a critical juncture, a tipping point. This is the last decade, 2020 to 2030, the last chance to set the world on track to 1.5 degrees. The question is, will we rise to the challenge? It is my pleasure to welcome... On critical Mr. issues such as Mr. climate change Pierre, and access to Prime climate Minister funding Santos. on the global stage. For us, therefore, climate financing that will allow us to adapt to the effects of climate change and which will enable us to build the resiliency needed to survive it is of paramount importance. It is therefore disappointing that the wealthy developed countries are yet to deliver on their pledge to raise 100 billion a year. Honorable Pierre's international engagements has forged strategic alliances and deepened cooperation with traditional partners. And what's important to us is our reputation. We need to be transparent I mean to keep the reputation of our country. But our investment portfolio, we aim to allow the investors to make a profit. In fact, they must make a profit, but we also want to improve the lives of our people. So our investment has to be in, in, in an industry that will improve people's lives. And when you improve people's lives, then the people themselves support the program because they will see it has a direct impact on their quality of life, on their on the standard of living, and they, by extension, will support the program. Prime Minister Pierre has also assumed the chairmanships of both the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank Monetary Council and the Board of Governors of the Caribbean Development Bank. Honorable Pierre has designed a strategic, people-focused agenda which will be implemented over the ensuing 12 months of his chairmanship. At the top of our growth agenda will be the, in the intensive promotion of food and nutrition security through trade practices, access to alternative markets, import substitution, and alternative consumption. In this regard, we'll accelerate efforts to reduce the ECCU food import bill of 1.6 billion in 2019 by 25% over the next three years. We will also strengthen and support small and medium enterprises to recover, survive, and thrive while enabling the establishment of new businesses, especially among our youth. And next week in Parliament, we'll be launching our youth economy in St. Lucia. <laughs> On the aspect of energy, will encourage the attainment of renewable energy targets established on the national energy policies to boost energy security and reduce the negative impact of volatility of oil prices on our domestic economies. Within his first year in office, Honorable PM has allocated millions in resources to further empower the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Various units within the police force have undergone advanced training exercises to bolster operational and tactical capacity. Determined to ensure law and order prevails and also extract violent lawbreakers from St. Lucia's communities, the Pierre administration has strengthened the Firearms Act. The Firearms Act makes provisions for more stringent penalties for criminal convictions on illegal gun and ammunition possessions. This scourge of shootings that happen in this country, we hope it can come to an end. But as I said, this is just one of, of, of the measures, Mr. Speaker, that we are taking to try to, to curb this menace, Mr. Speaker. It's not, it's not pleasant for us to have to stand here and to have to pass that legislation, life in, um, ex in, in, where people can be sent to prison for life for some, some offenses. It's not pleasant, Mr. Speaker. But I want to warn, particularly the young people of St. Lucia, 
who may be tempted to carry guns for somebody to go on a business to carry a thing there do not allow people to use you for their own vanity when you are caught in the fire the boss man is not the one who will pay for it do not allow anybody to give you anything to carry for them don't allow it because you are the one who's going to be in trouble you are the one who's going to languish in jail because of the increased penalties mr speaker there's a better way the newly installed peer administration heralded an immediate return to good governance practices in saint lucia this was personified with the election of a deputy speaker in the house of assembly honorable members please elect your deputy speaker mr speaker i beg to nominate mr jeremiah norbert Mr. Speaker, I wish to second the motion. I now put the question, as many as that opinion say aye, as many as of a country opinion say no, I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Congratulations, member. And the convening of Parliament within 30 days of the general election as stipulated in the Constitution. As Prime Minister, I promise to be Prime Minister not for some of the people, but for all the people. I believe that our island can be one where dignity of the human person is preserved and respected where our citizens are treated equally and given the opportunity to grow and achieve their full potential. Where the poor and less fortunate and vulnerable members of our society are protected and assisted by the government to achieve a decent quality of life. Where human rights of all are guaranteed by the government to all citizens. Where there is equal economic opportunity for all and the resources of the states are used to benefit the majority of the people, since there can be no economy without people. Where all citizens can discuss freely the economic, political, and social affairs in the country, free from political victimization and retribution. Honorable Pierre's anti-corruption campaign has given rise to landmark legislation, which has led to the establishment of a special prosecutor. Mr. Speaker, this act is not about a witch hunt. This act is about having St. Lucia as a place where corruption is not tolerated or encouraged, whether for politicians or for public officials. The special prosecutor is empowered by an act of parliament to investigate corrupt conduct by public officials. Citizens can now report corrupt conduct directly to the special prosecutor. Public officials and public officers implicated in corrupt conduct can be prosecuted in a court of law. The Prime Minister demonstrated his commitment to ending all forms of discrimination when he issued a formal apology to the Rastafarian community. To the Rastafarian brothers, the government extends its sincere apologies to your community for the immense suffering that you have endured over the decades under this law. The administration has taken decisive action to put an the Rastafarian brothers and sisters. Before Honorable Pierre's bold statement in the Parliament chamber, no government official, let alone a sitting Prime Minister, had ever publicly acknowledged and apologized to the Rastafarian community who endured decades of discrimination over their religious practices. And this has led to progressive to legislative reforms on local drug laws. The Pierre administration has decriminalized possession of minor quantities of marijuana. 
Convictions for possession of minor quantities of marijuana have been expunged. Citizens can now consume and grow marijuana in the privacy of their own homes. The peer administration has taken decisive action to put an end to institutionalized discrimination against St. Lucia's Rastafarian community. This message today from me as Prime Minister is a signal that from now, this government will make the 1st of August a major event in our national calendar. Our self-esteem, our dignity, our respect for the lives and struggles of our forefathers demand this of us. Within one year, the peer administration breathed new life into St. Lucia's cultural observances. After his swearing in last August, Honorable Pierre directed increased government support to revitalize the country's cultural observances. Honorable Pierre's impetus revamped and restored the significance of St. Lucia's cultural festivals. Celebrating em Emancipation Day is to say that we are strong enough to overcome the slavery of our times, poverty, high unemployment, violent crime, and underemployment. Celebrating Emancipation Day is to say that we as a people are determined to become a prosperous nation, conscious of our strengths and abilities, inherited from our slave forbearance, proud of whom we are and from whence we come. The program of activities that has been organized this year is just the beginning. These celebrations will grow and become grander with time. In fact, the planning committee has mapped out an action program for the next three years. As of this year, Emancipation Day will no longer be just another holiday. Sound fiscal policies rooted in the peer administration's maiden budget of 2022-2023 have set St. Lucia on course to grow by up to 8% this year. St. Lucia's accelerated GDP growth trajectory of 8% is the highest in the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union. Moreover, in the first eight months of 2022, Honorable Pierre and his cabinet have engaged various investors who have expressed interest in St. Lucia and want to develop and expand accommodation properties and introduce internationally recognized hotel brands to the island. The Prime Minister has confirmed the prospective value of these development proposals exceed $320 million. Investors are showing a high level of confidence and interest in St. Lucia's economic prospects. This is evident by the level of tourism investments, which has been recorded for the period January to August 2022. During that period, Cabinet approved 20 projects for tourism incentives, amounting to projected investments of $226.6 million. Sanders has started its renovations and expansion at the Halcyon property. I Hotel, formerly Cotton Bay, has reopened on the new management after renovations. East Winds Hotel is under new ownership with major plans for expand, expansion. Our youngest are destined to be the leaders of tomorrow. St. Lucia's innovative youth economy has been established to guide this transition by nourishing the next generation of entrepreneurs and business leaders with access to affordable financing to grow startups and cultivate expansions. Honorable Pierre has created the facility to provide the resources to turn hobbies and talents into sustainable and viable business ventures. With the establishment of the Prime Minister's youth economy, the government has signaled to the island's youth their needs will influence the policies that will guide their progression towards tomorrow's leadership roles. The youth economy aims at turning hobbies into entrepreneurship 
and skills into businesses by providing finance, training, marketing, and mentoring to young people seeking self-sustainable employment. The youth economy will create a special space in the economic system for young people to develop and grow their ideas. The youth economy will be flexible to allow, to allow young minds wanting to engage and succeed in their business ventures. It must not be burdened with excessive bureaucracy, red tape, and official doctrines. However, it must demand accountability and responsibility. It must provide the necessary incentives and opportunities for young people to be encouraged to pursue their dreams. Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre has framed his administration's ambitious proposals to make decisive interventions that are aimed at ushering in a new period of post-colonial transformation and modernization and to take St. Lucia to its next stage of development.